Welcome back to the RAS, ACS, and Behind the Knife journal cast on landmark papers in surgery. My name is Scott Moo, and I'm a general surgery resident at the Rutgers, New Jersey Medical School. I'm going to talk about the landmark CROSS trial that established neoadjuvant chemoradiotherapy as part of the standard of care for resectable esophageal cancer. Esophageal cancer makes up 1% of all new cancer cases in the U.S. each year. This turns out to be around 18,000 people yearly. The current estimated five-year survival rate is only 20%. Because there's no screening for esophageal cancer in the West, esophageal cancers can present late in the disease course with large tumors or even metastases. The historical treatment for localized thoracic esophageal cancer was upfront surgical resection with an esophagectomy. But by the early 2000s, other approaches, including preoperative and postoperative chemotherapy with and without radiation, had been tried, but the evidence was inconclusive. The thinking was that radiation could shrink the tumor and synergize with chemotherapy, treating both a localized tumor as well as occult deposits. Afterwards, the patient could undergo an esophagectomy with the goal of an R0 resection, a resection without any microscopically detectable tumor at the margins. In the mid-2000s, a group of Danish researchers was studying neoadjuvant chemoradiation for esophageal cancer. In this phase two trial, almost everyone was able to finish the neoadjuvant course and every patient who underwent surgery had an R0 resection. The follow-up phase three trial was the CROSS trial. CROSS stands for chemoradiotherapy for esophageal cancer followed by surgery study. And this was a multi-center randomized controlled trial enrolling 368 patients from 2004 to 2008. The patients were between 18 and 75 years old and all had adequate nutrition and good performance status. The tumors were all thoracic, starting more than three centimeters below the upper esophageal sphincter and not extending to more than two centimeters into the stomach. The maximum tumor size was eight centimeters longitudinally. The neoadvent protocol was five weekly doses of carboplatin and paclitaxel with weekday doses of radiation. And after four to six weeks of recovery, the patients would then undergo esophagectomy, the majority with an open transthoracic approach. Patients tolerated chemoradiation fairly well, and 94% of patients were able to complete the course and proceed to surgery. In fact, chemoradiotherapy improved the R0 resection rate from 69% to 92% without any increases in postoperative complications. But the primary question was, did all of this add up to improved survival? And the answer was yes. The addition of chemoradiotherapy improved the five-year survival from 34% to 45%. The median overall survival was 24 months in the surgery alone arm and double, nearly 50 months in the neoadjuvant arm. Patients with squamous cell cancer had the largest survival benefit, but survival was improved in patients with either histology, adenocarcinoma, or squamous cell. This is follow-up data published three years later, and the mortality benefit was still persistent for either histology. Overall, this was a well-done study with a conclusive, clinically relevant result, but a few limitations. One, the enrollment criteria were stringent and excluded older patients, patients with poor performance status, or patients with higher surgical risk. With our improvements in perioperative medicine, many of these patients are being treated now with encouraging results. Two, the study demonstrated less benefit for patients with adenocarcinoma, which is the predominant type of esophageal cancer in the West. And three, the study did not include minimally invasive or robotic-assisted esophagectomy, which are now popular options. Nevertheless, when this trial was published in 2012, it was hailed as a major breakthrough in the study of esophageal cancer treatment. And to this day, chemoradiation with paclitaxel and carboplatin is still listed first under the NCCN preferred regimens for preoperative chemoradiation. 
This graph shows the trend in five-year survival for patients newly diagnosed with esophageal cancer. We've made steady incremental progress in the past 40 years, but there's still much more work to be done. Again, I'm Scott Moo, a general surgery resident from Rutgers, New Jersey Medical School, and thanks for listening. If you have any questions, you can reach me by email. Let us know in the comments what papers you'd like to hear about next.